In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christos tenav yevait netzav. Christ is born and revealed. What happened right there is called call and response. There's an interaction between a speaker and an audience. And the speaker's statement, the calls are punctuated by the responses of the listeners. We have them in jokes. Knock, knock. See? We have them in music. And we have loads of them in church. What are some of the calls and responses we have in worship? Chaotun. Peace be with you and with your spirit. How about for the kiss of peace? Christos imech merheit netzav, ochnale heit netunin Christos si. There's a lot more. We already started with that one, Hagop. Peanut gallery over there. Uh, <laughs> But the clergy and the people also greet each other with call and response, right? When you see a clergyman, when you see me, you'll say, and I say, and when I see the bishop, I say, and he says, may God be your helper, may God be your protector. These calls and responses aren't meant to be empty rituals, and they're certainly not meant to be Armenian tongue twisters, even if they are sometimes. They're nothing less than basic training in prayer and discipleship. Ancient basic training in prayer and discipleship, which teaches us to, pray, to pay attention to God's call and to respond in kind. First in church and then in life. And it just so happens that today on Armenian Christmas, celebrating the baptism of our Lord, we have one of the greatest calls and responses the world and the church has ever known. As Jesus is being baptized in the River Jordan, suddenly the heavens open, the Spirit of God descends like a dove, and a voice booms from heaven. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. You would be hard-pressed to find a greater call than this. I'm preaching from on high today, three feet above my normal position, but God, his call came from the highest heavens. In fact, the choir will sing, I saw Zainan Hairagan Yeknitz Ichal. The voice of the Father resounded from the heavens. Here's the amazing fact the God who made everything visible and invisible, the universe and gravity and leptons and bosons, if you know what those are, he disrupts his own creation with a message from, my, from beyond. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So in themselves, these words aren't very eloquent and there's just 11 of them. And I bet sometimes you wish I preached just 11 words. And I can assure you that sometimes I wish I sometimes preached 11 words. But you see, it's not the words themselves that are powerful, it's the one who is calling and the love which which he calls. This is my son, chosen and marked by my love, the delight of my life. I keep pointing over there because that's the baptismal icon. And the great miracle of today, of Christmas, is not only that the Son of God was born into the lineage of men, but the great miracle is that through him and his baptism, we become adopted sons and daughters of the Father. And so God the Father's great call to Jesus is a call to all of us. These are my sons, these are my daughters, my chosen, who are marked by my love, the delight 
of my life. And what a high calling this is as Christians, and only Christians have it, to be adopted children of God through Christ. But now the great question, which always follows God's great call, are you and I paying attention? And what is our response? Paying attention has always been the first problem. That's probably the first reason, by the way, we have so much call and response in our church. It's so that Hagop will pay attention, and all of us with him. We say, and you say, if you visited Nora's classroom, my daughter, the teacher calls out hocus pocus, and all the kids respond, everybody focus. The teacher calls out macaroni and cheese, and they respond, everybody freeze. You should try that. Like a good teacher, like a good father, God knows we have a short attention span and we're hard of hearing. And that must be why he repeats his Christmas calling again at Jesus' transfiguration. And he says, this is my son whom I have chosen. And guess where the disciples are? They're asleep. And so God adds three resounding words, listen to him. We disciples are hard at hearing when it comes to God, so our church teaches us to listen. Orti prosume aseastvads. Sit straight, pay attention, God is speaking. But most crucially, our church trains us to respond to God's call with actions and not only with words. I said that God the Father's Christmas calling was only 11 words. Well, the response of his son isn't any words. It's actually all action. It's all love. And he loves his disciples, and he loves us until the very end. The beloved disciple John wrote that there aren't enough words in the whole world to describe the true goodness and beauty of Jesus' life, so he just calls him the word. Logos. Bonin in Armenian. Jesus is the first and the last word, you could say, of why God started this whole project. What his heart is and how he won't stop at anything until as all his children learn to live in love by the same goodness and truth and grace as does the Father. And so now we have a fuller meaning of our Armenian Christmas call and response between God and his people. God called his son Jesus to reveal his heart to the world with a love that overcomes all things, even betrayal, even death. And we hear that calling in many and diverse ways each and every Sunday when we meditate on the word of God, Jesus Christ, and his life. And though we're hard at hearing when it comes to the call of God, the patience of the Father is greater still. And his call has resounded 2,000 years unto this very day, and his call demands a response from us. In words first, yes, but ultimately in our actions and lives. And so today, let us respond to the call of our Father and every day following the example of his only begotten Son who has given us power to become children of God, full of grace and full of truth, now and always. Amen. Christos tenav yevhaik netzav. Christ is born and revealed. Blessed is the revelation of Christ.